right, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday night service at West Coast Baptist. You saw the stuff outside there. They're still working on the duck work. You can feel it's a lot cooler in here. I'm sure Pastor will fill you in on that. Quite a blessing. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand with your hymn books and turn to hymn number 592 as our opening hymn. I love to tell the story 592. Brother Gunsenhauser, Brother Tim, come on up and open us in prayer tonight, please. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity we have to meet together, Lord, and hear your word presented to us, Lord. And I just pray that you just work in our hearts, challenge us today as, as uh, you, your word is uh, preached. And, and I just pray that, that we would be open to it and attentive to your word, Lord. Give the preacher power as as he speaks and and lord i just uh pray that you'd meet with us today we pray this in jesus name amen amen you may be seated 
Good evening. Good to see tonight, church. And you notice the auditorium is a little cooler. You can sit on this side now and feel air conditioning. And I would like to say that this uh, Mousy uh, Air Conditioning Company has been very, very good to us. And uh, they are saving us over $30,000 because like this unit we told was burned out, was no good by the other company that looked at it. Turned out all it was is the belt was off. And they're cleaning them up, they're fixing them up, the same over here. And so it looks like we're not going to have to pay for a crane. We're not going to have to put any new air conditioners and the heaters on the roof. That's going to save us a lot of money. Amen. Amen. And they're redoing the ducts. So uh, the classrooms, one, I think the one the whole top set is done up there for you guys, right? Could you feel the difference today? So that's good. So it's, it's going to be great. Amen. And it's not costing us a, boot, a bootload of money. All right. Uh, any last minute prayer request that you could not get called in we're good all right so we have a prayer request uh i would like to announce this please don't forget this saturday men's uh, fellowship at brother scott's house and we're going to have a good time I want you men to be there right six o'clock if you want to ride with us be here at 5 45 and we can ride over together if you like so uh we're looking forward to a good fellowship. One of the things we're going to discuss is we've been planning a men's getaway. And we found a place at Big Bear, so we want to discuss that with all the men and see how many could plan to be there uh, during that time. So uh, we'll find out. We need a minimum of 20 men uh, to be able to do it. It's actually at a, a, a place right on the lake. It's right on the lake, and it should be really good for us. And they'll do all the cooking. All we have to do is show up. Amen. Speaking of cooking, where's Brother Raymond? He's not here yet. He says, uh, he's on the road. He's on the road. If there's any prospective ladies out there that needs a husband, he's a good cook. <laughs> he dropped off supper for us last night, and I have to tell you, it was delicious. Roast beef, and oh my goodness, just really the good sauce was good on the beef, and then as well as the baked beans were special as well, and uh, some kind of a uh, peach pudding. Tennessee peach pudding and it I mean my wife was bragging on it so that's how good it was you get her to brag on something but anyway it was it's fantastic so ladies you need a husband there he is he'll cook for you too he's praying for a wife so just throwing that out there just in case all right coming events you know we're all in the bulletin so please mark those down now beginning a week from tonight all of you that teach Sunday school you're a worker whether it's a bus route or anywhere else nursery, whatever you do in the church. If you're a worker, I need you here at 6.30 next Wednesday night. I'm going to be having this, the uh, workers meeting with you every week so we can get everything planned out for our fall push as well as for our uh, Western Roundup Sunday, Church's 50th Jubilee, all that. We want, we want to go all out this year, but it's going to take all of us to go all out. And so we need to all be here. No no, no excuses, all right? Be here at 6.30 so we can go over that and do everything within your power to be here. Amen? If you have to drive through uh, Jack in the Box and grab something on the way, eat in the run, I don't care what you do, but let's be here. If you need to bring uh, a Coke Zero into the meeting, I'll let you do it because we'll be in the other room, all right? All right? Sound good? So please plan on it so we can have a great time. We're going to uh, learn how to set some goals for our classes, how to reach those goals, and it should be great. All right? Got something, Lee? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Do not, no one, no one, no one, no one, N-O, no one touch the thermostats. See me or see Brother Lee, and uh, because we don't want to keep changing them around, and you can't set it real low to make it cold fast because it didn't get... It's not going to get any cooler any faster. And they told us economically the best way to do it is set it at a temperature and leave it. And don't ever shut them off. When you leave the building, you leave the building. Don't worry about them because they're going to be preset. And they said it actually uses, loses, uses less electricity to do that than it does to turn them on and turn them off and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to give them... A shot at it and see if these professionals are right. Is that right? Where's Tim? You know that kind of stuff. Does that sound right? Sounds, Sounds right. All right, there you go, from an engineer. So we're going to give it a shot and see. And uh, 
uh, it's even, I guess it's probably even better because there's a hard surge when you let them sit and then kick them on again. And so that's it. So if someone is too cold or too hot, see Lee or see me, and we might adjust it, okay? There are a few exceptions. Poor Mrs. Uh, Studdard's Amalia back there sits there. She gets cold. She brings blankets. So uh, hopefully now we won't have to turn this down as cold because this side is working. Amen? So that's good. All right. Let's sing. And all this time I was warm sitting over here. I thought it was just conviction. It's just the heater that wasn't working or the air conditioner. <laughs> all right. This evening's uh, missionary letters from uh, Brother Alex Halawate, missionary to Paraguay and Argentina, reads, Dear pastors and brethren, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise God for the wonderful blessings here in Gobernador uh, Gregorio Lopez. This is where I grew up as a child and lived in the area until the age of 21. I count it a privilege to be able to minister in this area now. When I went to visit the local cemetery, which is on our farm where I grew up, I walked around and I saw the graves of past family, friends, and students who have already passed away. Most of these people were unsaved, and my heart ached for them. I'm now finding the people, when we do the visitation in this area, that people are very open to the gospel and are not like in times past. In my father's days, the people would not even greet us because we were not Catholics. I find it now that they are friendly, and almost each home listens to Radio America, where my brother, Pastor Jose Halawate, preached for over 40 years. Now I have the privilege with my wife to visit and conduct Bible studies in the areas of Pigado Lopez, Leandro uh, N. Alman, and Mojang Grande, where a church is established, and some other areas. We also thank God that we had the privilege to lead a couple of families and a man named Martin Poletti to the Lord. When I led Rosalino and Mary Lopez and their three girls, Talia uh, Milagros and Yuliana, uh, Yul Yuliana Gomez to the Lord, Mary told us that she had visited so many churches and was baptized three times in order to go to heaven. But she was still not happy or satisfied until she heard the gospel to accept Christ into her heart and ask for forgiveness from God. We also visited the new churches that are being constructed the people are ascending their thanks to those who have contributed financially and prayed. They desire that God may bless you all. We are planning for a baptismal service as soon as the building is finished. One special request we have is that you please pray for those who recently accepted Christ. And if you are able to give towards Bibles, we will appreciate that very much as I buy Bibles regularly, sometimes up to 10 per week as each new believer gets one, as they could not afford one themselves. I check if they already have one, and if they do, it's either a Catholic one or an inferior version. All right, he has uh, some other points here in prayer requests. Uh, one, uh, some prayer requests for the new believers that recently received Christ, for uh, our health and safety as we travel to witness, and for more workers in this field that God will touch their hearts of local men to serve in the ministry. And he has some praise points for new believers, for the opportunity to witness in the area that I grew up in, and for the opportunity to witness to friends from the past. We are so grateful to all of you for sharing us or sharing with us in this work. We are a team together, and you are an invaluable part. May God bless you all richly. And please uh, send some photos or see some photos below. Your missionary, Alex and Elizabeth Halawakte. Amen. All right, folks, let's see here. Where am I at? Five, five, five. All right, go ahead and stand. This is going to be our offertory hymn. And turn to hymn number 591. 591 as the ushers come on to last. Wonderful peace.
Father, thank you for the gift of giving, for it was you that gave first, oh Father. Thank you for the blessing to be able to do so, and that, Father, we will ask you to increase these blessings and then all the tithes and offerings that we're collecting tonight and use them for the first gospel of this church, oh Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated.
let us take her hymn, I mean her hymn books, listen to me. I'm so used, all those years of being the choir director and music director, you think I'd be over, but I'm not. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 3, let's take her Bibles. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 9 is where we're going to start. First Corinthians chapter number three. Verse number nine says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God to destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So here we see tonight these scriptures about building our Christian life. We need a good foundation. How are you building on the foundation that was given to you? My father led me to Christ many, many years ago. But once I got saved, I was in, in his under his preaching, but it was up to me to build upon my life and accept God's will for my life to make my life what it ought to be. And the same applies to each, every one of us in here. You're not your own. You're bought with the price, the precious blood of Jesus. Each one of us belongs to Christ. Once you get saved, you're not your own. Amen? And what we're having today is people that are taking the foundation of salvation and not building properly upon it. And we're putting things that don't belong there. Um, I don't know if any of you ever have seen the uh, Winchester House in California. Anybody ever been up there and seen that? All right, a man that thought as, as, as soon as they quit building on this house, he would die. And I guess it actually happened that way, if I remember right. I think he's the guy that invented the Winchester Revival, if I, rifle, if I remember right. But anyway, if you go to his house, he got stairs going up into the ceiling. He just kept building and building and building because he thought if he quit, he would die. So he has stairs going nowhere and rooms built and doors hanging and all kinds of crazy stuff because he was afraid of that. Say, well, that's a foolish man. Well, you know, sometimes our Christian lives look like that. We're supposed to take heed how we build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. What we do with it. We each will give an account to God how we build it. Uh, a foundation is so important. Um, if your foundation is off, your whole house is off. When my wife and I were looking at houses, I had, we thought I, we had a house that we might really like. Had a nice big family room, and uh, but we if we took an ink pen or a marble or something, that that floor doesn't look right, and we let it go, and sure enough, the ball goes shoo across the room, and we found out it was not supposed to be that way. It was that way because it was never a real foundation. It actually was a patio, and the water was designed to run out, and they never got it permitted. So the house wasn't built right. I like a house to be built right. Anybody watch building videos? Remodeling homes and all the things that people do. And uh, it's very important. You can't just take any wall out, right? You have to have a wall that is non-supporting to remove. So a lot of times they'll decide they're going to take the wall out between the kitchen and the, and the living room or the dining room or something, and they go to do it. Oh, wait a minute. We can't do this. Now we've got to buy an expensive huge beam and put a beam in here and change the whole thing in thousands of dollars later. Uh, so I would not attempt to build a house on my own because I would not know what it would be like. And I think, you know, California homes, a lot of them are that way. Um, 
if you look at California homes and you buy wallpaper, anybody try to wallpaper walls in California? You start over here and you put your wallpaper on the wall and you get over here and all of a sudden you got a white space of wall like this and a tiny little space at the top because the walls are not flush. Okay, that means it was not built properly. Now our Christian life should not be that way. Our Christian life should be built on God's word, Jesus Christ. He's our foundation. We should follow the foundation. You know, you can't, you can't uh, build a wall that doesn't have a foundation underneath it. You can't go out this way when the foundation goes that way. But that's what we're doing. Our, our Christian lives actually often look out of shape. And we don't have a good result in work with, working with people because we don't follow the foundation. You must follow the foundation. It's the importance of a good foundation. A good foundation will stand strong. And it won't move. It'll stay stationary, and it will last. Uh, I was watching the video on Pompeii. Anybody ever seen that, Pompeii? And they're digging down in the, way down now into the uh, earth, and they're finding all these beautiful walls and these beautiful streets. They really still stand. Why? They were built right. Volcano took it out, but they built them right. And uh, our lives should stand the test of time. Our lives should be able to take whatever is thrown at it if we have the foundation of Jesus Christ and we build the way that God wants us to build. And we know that Jesus is the only good foundation. Look at Psalms chapter 1. I should say Psalm 1 to be correct. Y'all know that, right? It's not Psalms 1. It's Psalm 1. It's in the book of Psalms, but it's Psalm 1. They're all numbered. If I can get there myself. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And the ungodly, of course, it says are not so. If our foundation is correct, we're going to have a fruitful life. It's going to be a good life. And we'll not budge, we'll not move. Uh, how do people fall away from serving God and being in church? It's because their foundation is not solid. They're not rooted. Now, I'm not saying they're not saved, but there is that possibility. But the problem is, I think a lot of times we, have, we start out right, but we don't build right, and we make a mess of our lives, and it's often often hard uh, to deal with that now and unfortunately I see so much of that um, and I, you've seen people leave the church how many of them that leave the church under the bad circumstances are doing well now spiritually they may be a little happy I don't know but how are they doing spiritually where are they going to church how do they look how do they talk how do they dress what's their attitude and it's all because they left the foundation that they had. And I'm thankful that I had a, a, someone who took me to Christ and gave me the right foundation. That's why soul winning is so important. You want to make sure when you're winning someone to Christ, you're giving them the foundation that they can build their life upon. They are not adding Jesus to their life. They're going to follow Jesus. They're going to make a, it's going to make a difference in what they say, what they do, how they act, because they're going to follow the mode that Christ has for their life. That's what we're supposed to do when we're saved. He is our rock. He's our foundation. Uh, the wise man built his house upon the rock, the foolish upon the sand, and sands shift. You ever been down at the beach with your feet in the water and the wave comes in? And then all of a sudden the wave goes out. What happens to the sand around your feet when it goes out? The foundation is gone. You can literally lose your balance if you're not paying attention. So we have got to have a solid foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is our life solidly, solidly laid on that foundation? That's where we need to be, folks. Everything we say, everything we do, we should be desiring to follow 
the pattern that God has for us. Uh, I don't have times I've said, I, well, I'm not convicted of that yet. Really? Is that how it works? Does it take the conviction to show you what's right and what's wrong? Or is, you know, the Bible's pretty, pretty simple. It really is. It's not hard for me to understand. You know, a woman doesn't make her body naked. Man doesn't leave his body naked. The Bible teaches against tattoos. Did y'all know that? I mean, there's a lot of things in the Bible that Christians just don't want to follow. There are men that get up, say they're called the preacher. They don't wear a, any kind of a nice outfit. They wear jeans and flip-flops and T-shirts, you know, and, and they show off their tats all over their body, you know, and I want to be with them. I'm going to be like them. They got their hair all messed up and all that stuff. They're not following the foundation that Jesus laid. That's why we're making no difference in this world. Christians today are not solid on the foundation of the Word of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't want it. They want to live their own life, do their own thing. I hear it time and time and time again. You know, well, I like this music. I, well, there's a lot of things I like, but I can't do. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can make a long list of things I like to do, and I can't do them. Right now, because I've done that, I've got a little device on my belly now and a little device in my pocket and it's reading my sugar all the time to make sure that I'm not cheating make sure I'm taking my medicine I'm part of a, a, a test group but it's to help me but I wouldn't be there had I pushed back away from the table more often if I'd have had a little bit of banana pudding my wife when we were first married made me banana cream pies and I could eat that whole pie in one or two days by myself easy Pie for breakfast, pie for lunch, pie. For getting dinner, I'll just eat two pieces of pie, you know. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. And I paid the results of it. You notice what it says here. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This foundation, you're the temple of God. There is no holy of holies anymore. You're saved. You have the Holy Spirit. You can approach God yourself. We're the temple. We are the temple, each one of us. Our body is a temple. How should we be with the temple of God? You know, people say, don't chew gum in church. And then they take their spiritual bodies and go out the door and do things they should not be doing. Grab a kid. Don't run in here. This is the house of God. And I'm not against saying that's, that it is the house of God. We need to treat it that way. But what I'm saying is, then they'll go out the door and live the way they want to live and do what they want to do. That is not following the foundation that Christ gave us. And we are commanded here to follow this. Now, if you know anything about the First Corinthians, this church must have been a Baptist church because it was full of problems. And if Paul is addressing... Problem after problem after problem in here and dealing with each thing. And obviously this is a problem because people were not taking care of their bodies. They were doing things they should not be doing that were not healthy and good and definitely were not spiritual. So <clears throat> you understand when you commit sin, you are taking the temple of God into sin. You're defiling it. So if you commit adultery and fornication, drunkenness, smoking, dancing, all that stuff, you do those things, you're abusing the temple of God. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you. What do they call it in the temple? The Holy of Holies. That's where God dwelt for the children of Israel. We now dwells inside each one of us. So when we don't take care of this temple, whatever is physical, spiritual, mental, whatever the issue is, we are not building upon the foundation that we're supposed to build on. And I know Christians that have never built. They got a foundation, but that's as far as they got. They've never won a soul. They've never taught Sunday school. They've never uh, gone out of visitation. They never read their Bible. They don't pray. They're not faithful to church. You think about it, what's the problem? They're not building on their foundation. We need to build on the foundation that God has given us to build on. Now, everybody's building is different. God has a different, different plan for every one of us. I know it's not the same. But God has something for each one of us to do with the temple of God. 
You're not your own again. You're bought with the price, the precious blood of Jesus. We're not ours. And that's the problem. We're willful. I'm talking about we're willful about the way we live our lives. I'm going to do what I want to do. I was taught something in sales many years ago. And I didn't like it, but it's true. People do what people want to do. So if I was selling uh, color TVs, you know, and the guy could only afford the $300 Hitachi, that's what was real big, Hitachi in those days, little, you know, color tube set, you know, they'd look at the picture and that, oh, it's okay. And then they'd see the Sony and they'd go, oh, no. Oh, he couldn't afford the Sony. He could afford this one. But before the night was over, the plastic came out and he got the Sony. I was taught that in sales. To say, I, I, I find out what people need. What the, I tried to sell them what they need, not what they want. Unfortunately, you can't, can't do that sometimes. People do what people want to do. Talk to car salesmen. You know, you come in, and how much can you afford a month? Don't ever answer that question. It's none of their business how much you, you can afford. Well, if you can afford 400 a month, what's 425? What's 450? I almost punched a guy once because he says, what do you mean you're going to talk to your wife before you buy? What are you, a man or not? I came this close to punching him out to show him what a man was. I said, I want to discuss it with my wife. We pray over these matters. We talk about these matters. But, you know, people do what, what people want to do. It's the same in the church. It's the same in Christian life. People do what people want to do. There are people tonight, if they wanted to be here, they could be here. I can't afford the gas. Yes, they can. They can. People do what people want to do. It's a fact. They can afford to stop at Taco Bell and Jack in the Box and all these other places. No problem. But, oh, I can't afford gas to come up to every service. I'm tired. There's a ball game tonight, and they'll jump on that TV and watch a ball. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Ha! Ha! Wow! Woo! Look at that guy run! I'm too tired to go to church. People do what people want to do. Christ is the only good foundation. We must follow Christ, and that will give you a solid life. Don't you want a solid building? A good building for God, not just, not just for God, but even for yourself. Do you understand it's better to do what God wants than to what you want? God knows you better than you know yourself. We had a preacher years ago preach a sermon. He's in heaven now. Arthri I didn't know arthritis killed, but arthritis killed him. His body became calcified. He was a high tenor singer in a quartet with my brother, Dan Vaughn. He could sing, but he talked about it. He said, there's the... The you that I know, and there's the you that you know, and then there's the you that God knows. God knows us better than anybody, and we need to remember that. So let me ask you tonight, what foundation is your life built upon? Is it gold and silver and precious stones? I mean, isn't that something they're talking about now? Invest in gold, invest in silver. The inflation is bad. You need to have gold and silver so that you can survive. If things get really, really bad, you'll have gold and silver to... And you know, some people believe that they're buying golden certificates. You don't even have the gold in your hand. It's some place that's got certificates. What do you think is going to happen to that certificate come time to, you know? I know, I know one person, that, and she invested thousands in coins. Lost all her money. Didn't amount to a hill of beans. She needed money. She went to cash them in. She lost a lot of money. Took advantage of a poor widow lady. You know, we, we look at all these things. But spiritually speaking... Gold and silver, precious stones. What's heaven going to be like? You know, I heard the story about they uh, said that this preacher went up to heaven and they, they saw uh, St. Peter and he's talking to St. Peter and there's a guy out there with a wheelbarrow and he was digging holes in the street and uh, picking up gold and the preacher's, he's still in the gold in heaven right there looking. He's, oh, no, that's just pavement. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the streets with gold are paved. Amen. And so we, we have so many things God wants to do for us and with us, and we miss all the blessings because we don't use him for our foundation. We don't build our lives totally on Christ. Well, I'm not called to preach. 
Well, that's fine. Not everybody's called to preach. Not everybody's called to be a missionary. But everybody is called to be a follower of Christ. All of us as Christians, I don't like the term layman because some people think, well, that means I can just lay around. No problem. I'm a layman, right? Oh, Ron Newell hated that word. There's nothing special about a preacher. We're all human. You know, and we all have jobs that God wants us to do. We had a man years ago, he wasn't, wasn't the brightest guy, he wasn't the sharpest dresser, he was an older fella, but every week he showed up to church and he folded the bulletin perfectly, and every Sunday he stood out here in, in front of that church back in Tennessee and passed out bullets and greeted people as he came. That one man made a difference to people when they came to church. Had a big impact. You know, we have a lady here that does that. Man, I'm telling you, Miss Amalia, she, she matches those lines up correctly and folds them so that they're straight. There's no little gaps on the, on the corners of the I mean, thing right now. It's perfect. It's perfect. And she wants to greet people. She wants to serve God. She can't do a lot. She passes out tracts where she lives, but she can't do a lot of other things in the church. So you need to find whatever it is, the pattern that God wants you to follow and follow the pattern he's laying for you. Let God direct your foundation and what needs to be done with your life. And if you don't, you're going to end up with wood, hay, and stubble. Wood, hay, and stubble burns. You ever watch Survivalist? And they have to build uh, places out in the middle of the wood somewhere, and it's the winter, and they're building stuff. I noticed something. When they build their wooden cabin-like things to build, there's one thing that they always do. They find stones. And with the stones, they build a hand-built uh, fireplace with stones, rocks, and mud in between. And they build it that way. And then they even have a chimney going out so it doesn't come in. Why do they do that? Well, if you, if you, if you, burn, if you make it out of wood, it's going to burn. It's going to be gone, right? If you don't do it with stone, the whole thing's going to burn away. Uh, so wood and hay stubble, it's going to fire up real quick, real quick. And I watch these guys, they take green trees, and green trees will burn if the fire's hot enough. That's why we have forest fires. They do burn. But it's amazing. What foundation do you have? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble? In order to have gold and silver and precious stones, you must do it Jesus' way. That's how you get rewards in heaven. We read this, this, uh, this passage, payday is coming someday. One day we will receive our rewards, and that's what this scripture is teaching. It's going to be wood, hay, and stubble, which will burn up. You'll have nothing to lay at Jesus' feet. But when you sows, when sows, we're talking about gold, precious, precious stones. Jesus talks about gathering his jewels when he comes. That's what he's talking about. All the saints people. So when you people to the Lord, you're putting treasures in heaven. The Bible says we'll cast our crowns at his feet. The old hymn, must I go and empty handed? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? That's quite a question, isn't it? Are we going to go to heaven? And not have any crowns, any stones, any gold, and every, all rewards are just going to be gone. You know, if you don't teach your Sunday school class with the right attitude, you're not building up treasures in heaven. If you don't do things for the right reason, if you're not doing it for God, you're doing it to, for show. I've seen it here. I've had people in the church, they look like they're really doing good, and all of a sudden they burn out. Well, nobody else is doing what I'm doing. I'm done. I quit. Why isn't he doing this? Why aren't they doing that? I'm out here every week. What's wrong? You know, uh -uh. that means you're not doing it properly. You're not following God's pattern. Meekness, humility, doing the will of your father rather than the will of man. You know why so many fundamental Baptist churches are all messed up and gone now? Because when the man's gone, the foundation's gone. 
church should be built in such a way that it's going to stand. He said, upon this rock I build my church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So why are the gates of hell working against so many churches? Because they're not built on the right foundation. Uh, when, you, when you get to pastor's meetings, you meet people and see all kinds of things, you just don't know what to think sometimes. You know, how many of you run? Bless God, we're running 500 every week now. And of course, I'd really like to go count. Uh, I know we had a contest with the church years and years ago. That pastor's in heaven now. We had a contest going, and his people were doubling the numbers on Sunday so they could beat us in the competition. In other words, the choir was there... They, had to, they went to two services when we started the competition. So in the morning, early morning service, the choir was there. They got counted. In the, in the later 11 o'clock service, the choir was there, and they got counted again. You follow? Yeah, that kind of stuff. We don't have to cheat and fool around and play games with God. Let's do it for the Lord. Amen? That's what it's all about. Payday. Payday. Uh, uh, we should be looking... Not for rewards for ourselves. My idea is, is if, if I get anything from God, I want to lay it at his feet. I want to say, Lord, I wish I could have done more. Forgive me. No bragging in heaven. We'll answer to God. Are we following Christ? Are we following man? Are we following his word? Are we live in the way we want to live? Are we living the way God wants us to live? Oh, imagine if we could just get a hold of this. I'm real excited. This year we have, uh, um, while I'm sitting there drawing a blank, I just talked to him today on the phone. Brother Abbott will be here in October. We're planning a week of meetings. Do we want him or not? We want hard preaching. This guy can preach hard if you know it. We need it. I need it. We all need it. But whether or not we have revival, he can't bring it. It's got to start with us. So let's be praying, let's be working. Amen? All right, let's break up to our prayer groups. Don't forget to get your prayer request. Uh, men, we go to the library, coffee shop.